creativity is a player who you know uses some kind of move to beat another player right and then he gets a shot of dopamine in his head and and then it's like a spark that goes off and says like oh i can do this right like i can make this play and it's good so you can't have you got to have drills or things where the players are challenged by other players but at some point they can be successful right? If you, if you try one of those moves and it doesn't work, and you try one of those moves and it doesn't work, and you try another move and it doesn't work, you're not going to try it and you're not going to try anything anymore. So it's hard to have that balance of, you know, so maybe you, you just tell the defender to go 70% or you make a drill where it's really hard for the defender so that the offensive, you know, I'm, a, I'm an offensive guy, so that's how I think of things, is successful because that's the only way they're going to try things again is if it feels good to them and they're successful on it. And, and I'm not saying it's easy to make up these drills, but, but at some point, you know, you, you do drills where the defender's on you for a short amount of time, he's playing 70%, then you let him go. Or you do drills where the, the defenseman is at, you know, constraint drills where the defenseman's at a disadvantage and it gives that offensive um, player an advantage. And then they get hit, like, you know, they get excited because they beat a guy and so they try it again. And that's where the creativity comes in. It's, it's from the confidence of doing it. I know we've talked a lot about, you know, repetition and the repetitiveness of a, of a practice, but I think there is value in doing a drill again, you know, whether you do it one week and then you do it the next week, because, you know, at the same time, you know, there's the kids that are always in the front of the line, right? Like that, that get the drills and do it right away. But if you do a drill a second time, you know, the kid that's in the back of the line might think, oh, I remember this from last week. I can go in the front of the line. We talk about the confidence building. So if you can build out a drill, right, that, that forces the creativity that Eric just talked about, um, and now you have, you know, your group that's confident week one of this, then you, you go into week two, you do it again. You have your, maybe you have your whole team that's now confident, that's trying, you know, whether to be creative within the drill um, in a different way or whatever it might be. I think also the repetitiveness of, of a drill that is creative, that forces creativity, uh, forces players to, you know, to make decisions and to, to think about the options that he or she has within the drill, um, you know, the second or third time that they do it, whether it's, you know, after one week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, it, as a coach, that's where you need to read and react and see, okay, are they develop, developing or are they getting frustrated because it's not working? And then that's where you need to adjust, you know, what you're doing. But it just... What they're saying with that three-pronged approach, you know, it, it, it's so important for us as coaches, and we talk about this a lot, where it's that, you know, the, the human development first, right, child development, and, and then get into that athlete development, and then the sports specific, and it's so critical. Right now, this year, more than any, any being in a pandemic, I mean, we're more or less in the, the self-esteem self -esteem business than anything else for these kids. I mean, giving them you know, the things that they need, that mental side is so critical for them right now. And I think that's important when we look into this practice planning that you're talking about, Jimmy. I mean, get back, is your practices, you know, player centered with the players in mind? I mean, you have a, you know, Olympian and a former NHL are on the call here and just talking about how critical that even at the highest levels that they're dealing with players, all players have deficiencies. And, and we're talking about youth players as a youth coach, we have to have patience, trust in the process of the long-term athlete development, understand it takes time to develop that and look at what we're trying to do. If I'm coaching 10 U, I'm making drills and practice plans that are appropriate for that age group. I can't go do what Eric and Kendall are doing, you know, in those Black, uh, Blackhawk practices. I think that's important for us to understand, like, is it appropriate to that age group? And then can I actually relate it to them? Like any, any good plan, you got to put some thought into it and, and look to execute it and then review it again of, okay, how can you make it that much better? And I think when we look at the practice design, we talked at length already how fun is the number one, right? You have to, that doesn't matter if you're coaching eight U hockey or if you're on the, um, the highest levels, funds are paramount to your practice. So you build that and you build in the decision-making. Are you allowing those players to problem solve? And that just doesn't start at, you know, 10 and 12. Start it with your kids at six and eight U. Force them into things where they're not just going around cones. Kids are incredibly smart, you know, they can, and the beauty of working with kids, they can fact check you now on everything, right? They go right to the Google. So you got to give them the why behind it, right? And tell them, hey, this is why it's going to transfer into the game for you. And then challenge them. We, we work into, you know, we play a team game, but we're all about individual skills and how we can develop those in those team con context. Then we look at, you're going to have essentially a top tier of, within that team, a middle and a bottom, but how are you challenging each player 
um, you know, each day you come to the rink and, and build those in and have that transfer to, is it a game-like situation? And then the, the important part is giving them those quality repetitions over time, that it's repetition without the same type of repetitiveness. Kendall talked about that randomness. Are we just doing block drills? Or are we actually giving more what the, the game's about? Where you are actually going to see that 